yogurt can be a fantastic addition to your weight loss journey or just as a general healthful food. But with so many options on the shelves, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. In this video, I will break down what to look out for when picking a yogurt in terms of sugar, protein, fat, and calories. At the end, I will also share my top picks and I'll answer the very important question that you don't want to be getting wrong. Greek versus Greek style. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Also, I'd highly recommend pausing this video right now, grabbing a yogurt from your fridge and using it as an example as we move through this video. So one key thing to look out for when choosing yogurts, particularly if your goal is weight loss, is the sugar content. Lower calorie yogurts, such as your light or your low fat yogurts, often will have some, if not all, of the fat removed. Unfortunately, this can compromise the taste. And to compensate for this loss of creaminess, many manufacturers will add sugar in so that the yogurt still tastes good. So a yogurt labeled light or low fat might seem like a better choice if you're watching your weight, but it is important to check that it doesn't contain excessive amounts of added sugar. But when it comes to looking at the sugar content of your yogurts, it can be very, very confusing, which is what I'm gonna try and help with today. Because not all sugars are created equal. So with milk and sugar, there is a naturally occurring sugar called lactose. So when you look at the nutrition label of a yogurt that has absolutely no sugar at all added in, it's completely plain, it will still say that it contains around three to six grams of sugar. You will see this on the label as carbohydrates of which sugar. And many people will see this and then they will get worried and they think that sugar has been added in but there is a really big difference between the naturally occurring sugar in the yogurt and then added sugars that you might get in your flavored varieties. So as a rule of thumb, for every 100 grams of yogurt, you can expect this to contain around three to six grams of naturally occurring sugars. This is your lactose, and we don't need to worry about it. So if you look at this label here, this is a plain yogurt and it contains three grams of sugar but we can assume that that is the naturally occurring kind. Now some flavored yogurts, they can have up to five teaspoons of sugar added, more than some fizzy drinks. And while it's still often going to be a healthier choice because you're going to be getting calcium, phosphorus, potassium, choosing a lower added sugar option is often the healthier choice. It's better for health and for weight loss. Now we are talking a lot of numbers here, so it might get confusing, but I have you covered. I have a free guide summarizing everything that I chat about today and you can get it via the link in the description box below. I recommend taking a screenshot or a photo of the information on your phone and bring it with you the next time you go to the grocery store. I don't expect you to remember everything that we chat about today. And I've also made a list of some of the options that I think are a good choice. So I've done a lot of the hard work for you. Now it's not an exhaustive list, so if your favorite yogurt isn't on the list, it does not mean that it's not a good choice, but you can use what we learned today. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos. And if you're looking for healthy, high protein recipe ideas, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now, the annoying thing is that it's not always clear from the nutrition label how much sugar in the yogurt is the naturally occurring kind versus how much is the sugar that has been added in. The sugar content is often lumped together under the of which sugars section. However, some labels are clearer like this one here. This label shows both the total sugars and the added sugars. This way you can more easily determine how much of the naturally occurring kind versus how much have been added. Now, if it's not that clear, what do we do? Well, we go back to our rule of thumb. Remember I said a 100 gram serving of yogurt naturally has around three to six grams of lactose, which we don't need to worry about. So if you see a nutrition label like this one here, and it says that the yogurt has 12 grams of which sugars, taking our rule of thumb, we can assume that four grams of this is naturally occurring sugar. So we have eight grams left over, which means eight grams of added sugar. And this equates to about two teaspoons. And I'll just throw some labels up here. Now I'm not naming any names, but you can see here that this yogurt is low fat. So you might think it's better for weight loss, but it also has four spoons of added sugar, which is not good for general health. If you are still unsure if sugar has been added, look at the ingredient list. They are listed in descending order. So if the second or the third ingredient is something like sucrose, dextrose, or a syrup, then it is likely that sugar has been added. And this is where you will also see if artificial sweeteners have been added instead. Now, is this a big deal? Well, considering the protein, iodine, calcium, and everything else that you're getting from the yogurt, it's still often a healthier choice in comparison to a cookie or biscuits. So my recommendation is usually to look for a yogurt that has less than six grams of added sugar, if you can. So on the label, you are looking for one that has less than 10 grams of sugar in total. 
and this will account for your four grams of natural sugar. And if you have kids, it's a really good skill to be able to understand these yogurt labels because a lot of the yogurts that are marketed towards kids have more sugar than a chocolate bar. Now let's talk about protein because yogurt is one of my favorite ways to get protein into my diet. And it's an excellent low calorie, high protein food if weight loss is your goal. But again, it depends if you're choosing it correctly or not. I did a recent video for explaining my trick on how to find low calorie, high protein foods, which I would recommend watching if you haven't already. But the right yogurt can tick all of these boxes. So in general, I recommend choosing either a Greek or a Skyer yogurt. These are both excellent sources of protein. Quark is another really good option, but technically this is a soft cheese, so I'm not gonna cover it today. Do not choose Greek style. This is a mistake that I see many people make, but Greek style is not Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is strained, which makes it thick and high in protein, whereas Greek style has additives that make it appear thick. It's not actually a strained yogurt. Now, Skyr is an Icelandic yogurt that is just as thick and creamy, if not more. And this is because it undergoes a more extensive straining process. It's also often traditionally made with skimmed milk, and therefore it's often lower in fat and lower in calories than Greek yogurt. So how much protein should you be looking out for? Well, this is gonna depend on your protein needs, which I cover in this video here. But generally I say to aim for at least 10 grams of protein per serving. Protein helps keep you full, reducing the likelihood of you reaching for lots of snacks later on. So to recap so far, we are aiming for less than 10 grams of sugar per portion and 10 grams or more of protein per portion. If that is all you take away from today, then we are doing very well. There are also many new yogurts on the market with even higher protein contents again some with 25 grams of protein per portion. They often have added whey protein, which makes them a good option if you're looking for another way to get more protein into your diet, or if you have really high protein needs. Now, a little side note here for people who are a little bit intolerant to lactose, even though you may not have probably clicked on this video in the first place if you are, but people with lactose intolerance do often find yogurt much easier to digest than milk. And this is because most yogurts contain live bacteria and these can help break down lactose. So your body has less to process on its own. If you are very sensitive, choosing yogurts that are labeled probiotic, which means they contain live cultures of helpful bacteria can be a good option. Yogurts that have been pasteurized, a process that kills bacteria, may not be as well tolerated. As well as this, the full fat yogurts and the strained yogurts like your Greek and your Skyr, these tend to be a better choice if you are lactose intolerant because they have more fat and less lactose laden whey than your low fat yogurts. Now let's look at fat. The fat in yogurt and dairy is saturated fat, which is the kind of fat that we generally say to keep limited because it can raise cholesterol, which is not good for your risk of heart disease. However, dairy is an exception here. And when I say dairy, I'm referring to milk, yogurt, and cheese, not your cream and not your butter. So it's thought that because dairy provides so many other beneficial nutrients, like as I mentioned, the calcium, the phosphorus, and the potassium, these counteract the saturated fat. And in fact, recent research has shown that diets emphasizing regular full fat yogurt, as well as fruits, vegetables, nuts, fish, and legumes, were linked with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. So my recommendations here are that it really comes down to personal preference. For some people, the 0% fat stuff does not taste at all. And they have to eat twice the amount of it to feel satisfied. So in that scenario, choosing a higher fat percentage may be better for you. Obviously with more fat comes more calories. So choose what works for you and your goals. The lower fat versions may be helpful if you're trying to stay in a calorie deficit. But I have another full video on the truth behind dairy if you want a deeper dive into the topic. Now let's look at calories. I typically say choose a yogurt with fewer than 180 calories per serving, especially if you plan to add toppings and you're trying to manage your weight. But it's also gonna come down to how much yogurt and how often you eat yogurt. So if you eat a lot of yogurt, like me, I go through loads each week. For me, choosing a slightly lower calorie or lower fat yogurt will add up to a big difference over a week because I eat so much of it. But if you only eat yogurt every now and again, and the one that you like has slightly more calories, it's probably fine because you're not eating it in very large amounts or every single day. So onto my recommendations for yogurts, and none of this is sponsored by the way, but I will say that I'm 100% prone to bias because I'm Irish and we have the best dairy in the world. So don't take that for granted. Our milk, cheese, and yogurt, you cannot beat it. But what I personally like to choose is a plain, unflavored two to 5% 
Greek yogurt. I find the 0% fat yogurts don't really satisfy me. And the 2%, just that tiny little bit of a difference, really makes for a creamier texture that I really enjoy. Regarding brand, if you're choosing a plain Greek yogurt, I don't think it really matters too much. I typically buy Phage, I'm probably butchering how to say that, or Chobani, simply because I live in Bermuda and that's what we have imported most of the time. But there are many other amazing brands and a lot of stores will have their own brands now too, which are often just as good and affordable. Now, another reason I choose plain, and I admit I have a big sweet tooth, but I can control how much sweetness I add to the yogurt myself by choosing a plain version. This could be done by adding honey, maple syrup, or whatever sweetener that you prefer. But I often find that when I have yogurt, I'm usually having it with fruit or berries or something else that's gonna get that's gonna give it its sweetness in its own way. And then I often don't need to add much else. But if I'm making it more of a dessert using it, I can add honey myself. I also like to choose plain because it's so much more versatile and I can add it to various savory dishes or use it to make sauces, homemade sour cream or ranch and dips. And I do this in lots of recipes up on my website. But if you do prefer something sweeter, then there are some really good yogurt options. And again, these are gonna likely provide a lot more nutrition than choosing something like a muffin or biscuits. So I've listed some of the ones that I recommend to my clients down below. Now, I hope this video has been helpful. Comment below and let me know what yogurt you like. Or if you have a yogurt and you're not particularly sure, just let me know and I'll be happy to help. If you enjoyed this video and you're trying to lose weight, then I recommend watching this one next. It covers a lot more easy, practical tips to help you with weight loss. Now, thank you so much for watching. Stay happy and healthy, and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.